There's a long-standing argument by creationists using a misunderstood form of information theory that new information and mutation can never be created, that only an intelligent creator can make new information in a gene. Well, let us start off with a very basic overview of the genetic theory just to get ourselves up to speed. And by theory, I mean a well-tested explanation of how a complex system works, not the colloquial educated guess. Until the 70s, the central dogma of genetics ran like this. DNA unwinds, and polymerase reads the DNA and converts it to RNA. This is done by way of a start sequence that the polymerase reads, and a reading frame where it starts producing RNA, and a stop sequence where it ends the reading. Ribosomes then do the same thing, converting RNA into protein strings that fold themselves into automatic configurations based on charges and bonds. Until the 70s, we believed that this was a one-way process. The discovery of reverse transcriptase changed that notion, which takes RNA and converts it into DNA, then integrates, shoves the new DNA into a host chromosome. HIV, while an awful disease, did give us advantages in the money we could study retroviruses and reverse transcriptase. Because of this, we discovered that all of our cells have relatively harmless retroviruses, that may have at one point in history been dangerous, but now just shoves its DNA into ours. Without reverse transcriptase, gene research would have been significantly slowed. So now that we understand the basics of how this works, let's move on to plasmids. Plasmids are small segments of DNA that can be moved between bacteria, and with the right bacteria, animal and plant cells. Bacteria passes these DNA between each other, sometimes using integrase to take the plasmids into their own DNA shoved in at random. Integrase always shoves DNA at random points, most of the time in areas without a start code on, so there's no impact on the cell at all. This may also be referred to as junk DNA, which may actually reduce the damage that this sort of mutation can have, acting kind of as a shielding. Sometimes it can get into a fatal area, killing the cell or causing cancer, and sometimes it can get shoved into beneficial areas, such as antibiotic resistance or duplicating the production of a positive trait, causing the trait to be expressed even more. Spirochetes, like syphilis, have a spiral shape that prevent uptake of DNAs and plasmids, which is why they can still be fought with penicillin, unlike any other bacteria that has taken up the resistance genes. Bacteria will also uptake DNA from dead bacteria, or just DNA in the environment, and integrate it into its own genome at random. It could kill it, but that's not a big deal, as there are billions of its fellow bacteria, so the genes get passed on just fine. But what you say, this is just bacteria. What does this have to do with animals and humans? And what does this have to do with new information being created? In DNA of any species, there are things called transposons. They are thought to contain parts of old retroviruses, or be the origins of the first viruses. These are genes that will jump out of a location and pop themselves into other parts of the genome at random. They can even be duplicated by polymerase. If these genes get duplicated, then the gene now can over generations be mutated while the old DNA is not. If that turns out to be useful, then new DNA information has certainly been created by random chance. Nylonase is an exact example of this happening. The bacterial culture was placed in a nutrient-poor environment, it took an enzyme it normally made, and one out of the billions of bacteria had a duplicate of the enzyme, and then that enzyme duplication mutated and it produced nylonase, which was able to degrade and gain nutrients from nylons and plastics. Creationists will of course move the goalpost yet again and say, well that's just a small change in an already existing information, and that's exactly the way evolution works. One mutation in a population may change the DNA difference between the population groups by a fraction of 1%, but over time, without interbreeding, these mutations will add up, and their variations will rise over time until they have a high amount of difference from each other. Humans share 50% of their DNA with bananas, each change a fraction of a percent, but over enough time and random mutations with selection by environment survival, we have the wide variation of life on Earth, and the trillions of other variations that are long extinct. New information in evolution is caused by duplication and mutation. The full genome is now longer, and it has more uses, and using DNA sequence, we can see exactly the rate of these mutations and diversions of the species, exactly as evolution predicts. Of course, the very last thing, 
This does nothing to explain abiogenesis, which is completely separate from evolution. Evolution has a mounting stack of evidence, including this, through fossil evidence, but even more so through genetic evidence. And if you don't understand how evolution works, you probably don't understand genetics.